one thing the book doesn't have a lot of is three-dimensional Jacobians. So I've prepared a three-dimensional Jacobian for us. Here's the original problem. Let's point with the weasel. It's a uh, region that has uh, a rectangular base, but the roof is tilted. The roof has a, a tilt to it. If you notice, the, the top of the this enclosure is z equals x plus 2. So the bottom is just the rectangle 2 by 3 right here. But then the, the roof is tilted higher uh, along uh, the higher x values. So it's uh, not a terrible triple integral to set up. Here's the original triple integral. We're calling the enclosure E. So the triple integral over E of the quantity x plus y dv is the original question. So this is the integral we're going to evaluate. Well, it's not so bad. We can just do this straight out. We don't need a Jacobian to do this, actually. It's not too tough. You can see the top skin x plus 2, bottom skin, z equals 0, and then that rectangular base. Very nice, very easy. But it does have x plus y right here and an x here, so we don't have any shortcut shenanigans to do right away. You know, we can't cash in on some simplified stuff. So we, uh, we do the uh, integral with respect to z, evaluate from x plus 2 to 0, multiply out, and now we have to integrate this with respect to y and then with respect to x. And since, look at this xy term, uh, x squared plus, there's a lot of things stopping us from doing something nice with these rectangular coordinates. There's no nice shortcuts to do. So I have to integrate with respect to y of this quantity, and you see that over here. And so all the y's are one higher power and dividing by the new power all the way through, and then putting in the three for every letter y. It simplifies to this. So you're getting the 3x uh, the, uh, squared for the first term and the 9 halves x over 2 plus a, uh, this one's going to have x in it as well. It looks, it looks like it's going to be a 6x. So those add up to 21x over 2 plus this last 9. So that's all these pieces come from there. Still got to do a dx. So this is one nice thing. The 3x squared just becomes x cubed. And the rest of it, I've got a fractional piece here, but I'm not worried about it because I'm going to have x go from 0 to 2. So this x squared is going to be a 4. It'll cancel with that 4. So the very last evaluation is not too bad, but we do get this unusual 8 plus 21 plus 18 equals 47. So 47 is the number. 47 is the number that this, uh, the, this triple integral is worth. So we've evaluated the function x plus y on this three-dimensional enclosure. So if x plus y stood for uh, some kind of measurement, some temperature or, or uh, measurement of light intensity or measurement of, of density or something, this would be the number that we get from adding up all the values of all these points over this three-dimensional enclosure. Now, one of the things we can do is we can change the domain. Now, this is... The, the real reason people do Jacobians is to make the problem more interesting or more, more malleable, more doable. But we're going to just change it because we can. So here's the rest of the story, kids. We have uh, a way of turning that original enclosure into something even simpler. If we let u equal x plus 2, v equals y over 3, and w equals z over x plus 2, an amazing thing happens the uh, original e turns into the unit cube parked in the first octant. Uh, we can go over these details in class if you want to, but these, these coordinates applied to the corners of this solid turn it into the unit cube. You can kind of see the, the x and y stuff really easy. Just divide all the x's by 2, divide all the y's by 3. That turns your base into a 1 by 1. And then if you if you remember that z is equal to x plus 2, then this w equals z over x plus 2 means that w is equal to x plus 2 over x plus 2 on that top, on the top, on the top roof. So w equals 1 is what the top roof turns into. Oh, and that's the name of the plane of the top roof of the unit cube. So it's not looking too bad. Let's see how this thing goes. So the original triple integral gets rewritten. Well, x and y... Can't stay x and y anymore, but we know what x is equal to. If x over 2 is, is, is u, then x is 2u. So this is a 2u. And the same thing with y. y is a 3v, so I have x plus y. 
I got to do the Jacobian. There's going to be an adjustment to do, and that's what that's the big deal for this section is how to find the Jacobian. But the big deal behind the Jacobian is how do you know what to do for the Jacobian? Well, here's how you know what to do. I have formulas that say u equals x over 2, v, v equals y over 3, etc. I also have x equals 2u, y equals 3v, and z equals this uh, 2uw plus 2w thing, which I get from substituting. So the, these, these formulas have x equals y equals z equals in terms of uvw, and then I have uvw equals in terms of xyz. Which one do I use for the Jacobian? And here's how I know. Look, it's uvw, du, dv, dw. This is uvw stuff. So the Jacobian has to be made of u, v, and w stuff. So I'm going to use these for my partial derivatives. So here's what a Jacobian is. It's right here in this corner. A Jacobian, in this case, since it's a three-dimensional domain, my Jacobian is going to be a three by three. And observe how it follows the coordinate system. My original coordinate system was x, y, z. My new coordinate system is u, v, w. So my coordinates or my, my entries for my three by three matrix are going to be the partial derivative of x with respect to u, partial derivative of x with respect to v, partial derivative of x with respect to w. It's alphabetical order. All you got to do is, is, is just notice that you know everything's in alphabetical order because I was smart enough to name my coordinate axes x, y, z and my transformed axes u, v, w. So I know what to do just following the order. And I know to take the partials of these because I want the partial of x with respect to u. That's going to be this 2. Partial of x with respect to v, 0. Partial of x with respect to w, 0. So 2, 0, 0 for that first row. Next up, it's going to be the partials of y with respect to my coordinates. So the partial of 3v with respect to u is 0. Special of 3v with respect to v is 3. And the partial of 3v with respect to z is 0. That's a 0 there. Looks like a g or a 6 or something. It's a 0. And then the last row is the only one that's vaguely interesting because z is equal to 2uw plus 2w. So the partial with respect to u is going to be 2w. And there it is. Partial with respect to v is still all zeros. And then the partial with respect to w. See, that, that w there. So then I got two terms, 2u plus 2. Now this is a, a 3 by 3 to evaluate, just like we do the cross product. But with zeros in these two spots, all you really have to do is the 2 times the 3 times u plus, or 2u plus 2. So it's 2 times 3 times 2u plus 2. And that works out to be 12u plus 12, or 12 times the quantity u plus 1. That's my Jacobian right there. That's my Jacobian. That's the price we pay for changing from the original box to something much simpler, the unit cube. So we have to pay for that adjustment. And now we go back up to this integral, and we pop in that 12u plus 1. So I put the 12 out front. I'm going I'm to mess with that. I'm just going to put the factor of 12 out front. My 0 to 1s are all in place. The original 2u plus 3v, and then times the u plus 1. So the Jacobian is completely in the problem now. All I have to do is multiply this out, which I did. Sorry, it's so tight in there. But I multiply this out and integrate term by term. Evaluate from 0 to 1. Now I'm doing a tricky thing here. I did the dw all by itself because if you notice, there's no w's here. There's no w's here. So I can do dw, which will be w, and the evaluated from 0 to 1 is just a 1. So I that's 1 less d to worry about. But I do have to do the du and the dv very carefully because there's u's and v's. So I did the, uh, looks like I did the du. I evaluated from 1 to 0. Still got to do the dv. Now I got to do the dv, evaluated from 1 to 0. And I get this really amazing thing. Look at this. This is 12 from out front, 5 thirds plus 9 fourths, which does not look good until you multiply through by the 12, and you get 20 plus 27, which is 47, which is what we were supposed to get. 47 was the goal number. So let's go over this again real quick. I know it's only been nine and a half minutes. 
this is kind of like what Jacobians always have going on. You have transformation formulas. Sometimes they only give you one set of them and you have to make the other set yourself. Sometimes they give you both sets. Once in a while, in real life, they don't give you anything for the transformation. All you do is look at your original domain and say, is there a simpler domain? Is there a change of variables that we can do? And you just say, okay, well, if I wanted to make this simpler, what would I do? Well, in this case, this is a pretty simple region. But if I wanted to make it a unit cube, I divide by two this way, I divide by three this way, and I would somehow adjust for that slanted roof, which is what we have over here. So in real life, if you ever have to do one of these in an engineering problem or or something, you might have to scramble and come up with these formulas yourself. But once you have the transforms, once you have the formulas that change your coordinates, the rest is original integral, which may be very difficult, let's, let's say it was, turned into the simpler integral, look at those wonderful limits of integration, and the various adjustments to be made. You have to substitute according to your formulas into the original integrand and your Jacobian has to be speaking the same language as the rest of the integral. So if this is UVWs, my Jacobian has to be UVW stuff. Now I know that only looks like a 2. I know that only looks like a 3, but here's some Ws and there's a U. This is UVW stuff. That's the right stuff for this Jacobian. Okay? We'll do a bunch more in class over the next week. And uh, we're right there. We're, we're just about done with this uh, chapter with the uh, double and triple integrals and the Jacobians. We still have to do spherical and cylindrical coordinates, which are three-dimensional Jacobians. But I thought it'd be good to do a three-dimensional Jacobian that isn't one of the ones in the book. So there's a three-dimensional Jacobian problem for you. See you in class, kids. Bye.